or straight up on 10. And I know that if we end up waiting for the room to fill, like we could be here for a long time. The sessions don't always fill. Sometimes they get really big, sometimes they don't. Um, on behalf of CSA, I want to welcome you to the, what is it, 27th Annual Conference. And um, I hope that you have an enjoyable day. There are several rooms with several sessions and several topics um, that I think cover a wide range of uh, different things that you might be interested in. You do not have to stay for the entire conference. You don't have to stay for an entire session. I would ask that if you um, decide to leave when I start talking because you're just not interested in my topic, that you do so very quietly so that I don't get my feelings hurt. If you're going to leave when a speaker is uh, presenting because you're not interested, it's always best to do that between speakers just to more nicely. Um, CSA is wanting to recover their name badges if you are not staying or if you have a badge and you leave today, they would like to catch them back. Um, I don't know that that applies to everybody here, but if you do see somebody with badges, please uh, have them return them. Uh, we're going to have three presenters today. We're going to speak for about uh, 30 minutes for each presenter with five minutes of questions during each presenter's time period. So think uh, as you're going along about what kind of questions you might have to present to our speakers. Um, and then we should end right at um, 11.45. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask and I'll be happy to help you uh, if I can. Our first presentation is by Amy Pilopo. Philipposian. I should have asked beforehand. Oh, one other thing I might ask you. Um, I always forget to turn my phone off and things like this, and I always get a phone call and things like this. Um, so I would ask you to please silence your phone or vibrate it or otherwise find a way so that your um, ringtone is not blasting away in the middle of somebody's presentation. But again, I always forget to do that. So, uh, Amy is going to be speaking about how religious or religion factors into attitudes from same-sex marriage. I yield the floor to her um, and wish you the best of luck. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Amy. I'm a student at Cal State LA. Um, did my master's in sociology. So today I'll be. Um, so uh, my topic is how rel religious beliefs are shaping attitudes from same-sex marriage. Uh, and why this is important is the idea of tradition, traditional marriage has changed tremendously within the last few decades. And um, just to start off, uh, the reason why I decided to do this research topic, um, initially I have, uh, I, was ch I chose to do my research uh, just about marriage and how marriage has come a long way and where traditional marriage is no longer the, I guess, the norm. So, uh, for example, I was looking to do more of my research about cohabitation and people just kind of living together or not even thinking about marriage, um, you know, in the, in the 21st century. So, but as I went along with my research project, I realized that it was way too many loopholes and I wasn't able to narrow down my search and things like that. I wasn't able to find candidates, you know, things, uh, things of, um, of that nature. So. I decided why not same-sex marriage and religion because it seems like that seems to be the topic um, quite often now. Of course, since same-sex marriage has been, you know, legal. So uh, Proposition Eight was eight was passed in November 2008, which created a lot of controversy. Of course, um, that was another major issue that interests me as far as uh, why I chose to write this topic. This research project is set to set out to provide an overview of the correlation between religion and acceptance towards same-sex marriage. Um, and so basically, I started my topic and my research project, and then I went with the literature review, which of course tied into uh, my research project. And here's one of the examples of the previous studies that were done um, about same-sex marriage. And what I learned uh, when I was doing the literature review for this research topic is I realized a lot of the focus was more so about uh, the dominance and you know how men and women view same-sex marriage, but I was looking to focus more so on religious beliefs and looking at the major like uh, Christians, Catholics, um, you know, Judaism and Muslims and how they viewed it. But a lot of the research that I was kind of finding. 
uh, was not necessarily focused so much on those aspects of religion, um, which I was kind of trying to target. So um, problems with the prior research is cross-sectional study that was used had no cause and effect relationships. Really what I was um, looking for was more uh, tying into the correlation between same-sex marriage and religion. And other studies looked at same-sex marriage and religion, however, they failed to measure specific religion levels of spirituality and how deeply interwined the individual is within their own beliefs. So what am I doing um, differently, I guess, is that I have measured religion in different ways, such as religious services, the importance of religion, and how much individuals value religion as something important. Um, I, you know, when I was doing my research topic, um, I decided if I look at how important religion services are for individuals, then I can possibly find a correlation that I was looking for and how that would affect um, their you know, beliefs and how that shapes their attitudes about same-sex marriage. And um, I'm also looking at only college students, which, you know, that was the thing. I, because my research was kind of the aspect of millennials seem to have a, a different understanding and beliefs about same-sex marriage because we're more open and educated um, and have a lot more resources and things like that, whereas the, uh, the generation before, the silent, the baby boomers, would be more, uh, I guess, an accepted of same-sex marriage. But because I was given uh, a 10-week period to do a research paper, so I was only kind of forced to do, you know, college students. That was kind of my only difference, I guess, between other research that was previously done. Um, the theoretical framework and hypothesis is cognitive functioning should be its best when people are well rested. There will be a significant negative correlation between religion and acceptance same-sex marriage. That was kind of my hypothesis with this, is that there will be a significant negative correlation between religion and acceptance of same-sex marriage. So, formal hypothesis, independent variable, of course, is really just religious. Dependent variable is accepted towards same-sex marriage, and there will be a significant negative correlation between religion and same-sex marriage. As I mentioned, um, when I did this research, you know, I, my assumption was that by looking at how often individuals attend services and how, uh, depending on the religious and you know those factors, I assume that they would uh, be less accepted of same-sex marriage, whereas individuals who don't attend um, religious services would kind of go on the other side of like not really, you know, or accepting of same-sex marriage. A histogram was plotted of the understanderized uh, understand, understand residuals of for the multivariate model to determine normality of residuals. The histogram shows that the uh, under Standardized residuals follow a normal distribution. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, my data and analysis is demographics of respondents um, were 128 females, 70 males. Average age was about 21, and ethnicity was mainly Hispanic. Um, and of course, my, uh, I did my research of my survey questionnaire both online and in person, and I did it at Cal State um, LA and Cal State CSUN, and I did it both online and um, in person survey. So between Cal State Los Angeles and Cal State CSUN, um, it looked like the majority of the individuals who actually uh, participated in the survey happened to be Hispanic. Uh, the measurements of the variables are the acceptance towards same-sex marriages were measured on a six-point Likert scale. Religious study has three different measures, specific religion, levels of spirituality, and how deeply interwined the individual is with their own beliefs and attitudes towards uh, religion. Specific religion was measured as categorical variable with the following categories, Islam, Judaism, Christianity, Catholic, Buddhism, Hinduism, atheist, no religion, and other. Um, and what I found really interesting uh, with putting no religion and other is that you know, as we're evolving, it seemed like putting those two would also give the individuals an opportunity to not really go with any of the religion and kind of feel free to express themselves and, you know, put in if no religion or other. 
So the, the regression method I used was the OLS was used and the independent dependent variable was initially measured as linear. The OLS was appropriate for the project as a dependent variable acceptance of same-sex marriage and two of the independent variables measured level of spirituality and importance of religion and the continuous variable, while the third independent variable measures specific religion that could be the W coded for use in the OLS regression. Okay, so the regression results for the uh, leader <coughs> model that I found was the accepted for same-sex marriage. The mean score was 2.3 and the standard deviation was 1.72 which indicates that the overall lean towards supporting same-sex marriage. The mean score for religious services was 3.12, standard deviation 1.96, indicating that the overall sample uh, participants' religious services at around once a month to two or uh, three times a month. Also, the mean score for the importance of religions, religion was 3.20, standard deviation was 1.40, indicating that the overall sample somewhat value, somewhat values religion as something of importance. Um, so the results and the conclusion um, between the key dependent variables and the dependent variables, all three measures of religion, religion was found to be significantly correlated with acceptance of same-sex marriage. The variables of gender, age, grade, level, income, and relationship status were found not to be uh, statistically significant correlated with dependent variable. But also what I thought was really interesting uh, when I first started this research is uh, I, of course, made the assumption that, you know, um, Hispanics or Catholics would be less likely to accept same-sex marriage and they happen to actually be more likely to accept same-sex marriage. And of course, that's only because it, the, the study I was kind of doing was, I guess, more so Hispanics and Catholics. But my assumption, uh, previously starting with this research paper, is that um, African Americans would be less likely, and um, that's what they, that's what happened, is that African Americans were less likely to accept same-sex marriage. But what interests me and what surprised me is that you know Catholics according to my research, was that they were uh, more likely to accept. Christianity, um, they were more likely, the correlation was that they were more, less likely to support same-sex marriage. And unfortunately, uh, with other religions that I, you know, attended to study, they didn't really have much of a factor because there weren't um, enough, you know, participants, unfortunately. So um, some of the limitations, <clears throat> the main research problem was that the data collection and the survey procedures because I chose pur uh, purposeful sampling to conduct my survey uh, because I was given only 10 weeks for this research project, I was kind of um, limited on timing. So uh, the chosen sample included Cal State, um, Northridge, and Los Angeles students, therefore the findings cannot be broadly applied to other population groups although these findings were considered to be exploratory. Another uh, possible limitation was social desirability bias, meaning some of the respondents have over-reported the good aspects of their religion um, or other reported their level of religion. It was assumed that the respondents would be honest in answering the survey questions. That was kind of, you know, me hoping that they would actually be honest because um, that was the reason why I put most of my questions online. Was I was hoping that I would get more of a different response, whereas if I was handing them out to individuals, that they would probably be more honest about giving their answers, but that's just, uh, I guess, my assumption. And um, I guess that's it. Um, about the, the literature reviews. Um, 
some of the, the other studies that were done uh, previously kind of looked at the gender roles, um, for example, uh, one of the research by Whitley and, I uh, can't pronounce the last name, 2007, they mainly looked at the gender difference, like of how females and males, because males are more considered to be more masculine, that they would be uh, more likely to, uh, or less likely to accept same-sex marriage, whereas men would be, or whereas women, I apologize, would be more likely to accept same-sex marriage same-sex marriage. Um, but again, my research project uh, was just to kind of understand how religious attitudes um, affect or, you know, how they correlate with the same-sex marriage, basically. And um, overall, I think it was really interesting in the findings, like I mentioned earlier, was really interesting for me. But, um, you know, I don't... I'm not sure, maybe it's a possibility that I'll continue this research project in the future, but for now, um, I think this would be it. Um, you don't have it. 
I do have it, but I, it's just, it's on my phone, so it's kind of a hype, like a fine print to find it. But I definitely have it here. I just wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> Uh, 
the baby boomer generation and basically also um, you know our, our generation and, and so the, the thing was I was trying to kind of measure those two but unfortunately with the way my research was set up is I didn't have enough time to be able to go and interview uh, or survey both age groups like uh, compare the two so that's kind of why I was you know just given with that age group that I was kind of Cal State LA and you know uh, C Center students basically, which of course uh, between undergrad and grad students, it's just basically still within our you know our generation. So, so I had to kind of narrow down the age um, because of the time frame, I guess, the time limit that I was given. But I guess in the, sorry, um, I guess if I was to continue my research, I would look at both. I would compare the two. So that would probably be something in the future I would look um, to continue my research project is I would try to compare both generations and see if it still has the same effect, the same correlation, or does it have a different impact? Yes. So did you only have people from the survey? Did you do a hearing portion? No, I was only um, strictly just uh, basic interview questionnaires um, in person and over you know online that I was distributing as well, so. Um, I think we're on the presentation. Um, do, it seems like you're conflating spirituality and religiosity. Um, do you separate those two, like, by definition, or can I look at literature on spiritual but not religious and um, differentiating the two? I don't know if you look into that, or? I'm sorry, say that one more time. So there's a difference you're saying, and if I... Between spirituality and religiosity. Um, a lot of research shows that there's a, there is a qualitative difference between the two. And the same, um, we, you talked about um, thinking and twine and beliefs and attitudes. That, to me, that seemed more like spirituality um, than anything else. So it seemed like if you're using a lot of these returns um, interchangeably, I'm wondering if you're... Um, I have, to be honest with you, I have not, now that you bring it up, but I did, well, my, my, I guess, looking at it is I was looking more so, deter so my, my assumption was that individuals who attend more religious services or, you know, uh, who are more involved in their religious services would be, I guess, technically considered more religious and have, okay. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. They would be more committed and they, they strongly feel and believe yeah. in their religious services. Of, you know what I mean? Because they attend more services. Okay, okay, okay. So that's kind of what I was yeah. trying to measure is how often do these individuals attend their uh, religious services and based on that, uh, that's kind of how I would measure how religious are they and and, and based on that is... Um, did you measure some spirituality differently or, or was that included within religiosity? That was included. Oh, okay, it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, you're welcome. Oh, yeah. Any more questions? Well, I just want to thank you guys for your time. This was my first conference and I was a little bit nervous. I apologize if I was all over the place, but... <laughs>
as I mentioned before, it's always my phone that's not silenced and vibrating and I feel horrible. So if you could please check it, that would be greatly appreciated. Today um, I have John Aldecoa and I also have Corey Willis. They're presenting um, uh, regarding climate justice and things. And I'm going to yield the floor to them. Here is your clicker uh, on the new time in the morning. Hi okay, guys, so hello everyone. My name is Corey Willis. I'm a fourth year math anthropology undergraduate at UC Riverside. This is John. John I'm a third year graduate student at UCR. Right, um, so our presentation, we're look, or our research project, we're looking at climate justice in the current world revolution. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about world revolutions and the current weather and that. Um, so the theoretical perspective that we used for this um, was the evolutionary world systems perspective. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about world revolutions, uh, environmentalism, and the place of environmentalism in the current climate justice movement, um, as well as environmentalism in the new geoculture and how it affects the new global left. So how it affects a lot of different social movements in the current world revolution. And yeah, because the word stands in a larger web of global. Um, so the world systems perspective, um, it comes from Emmanuel Wallerstein, who's one of the first people to describe it. Um, so it's an interacting system, or system of interacting holidays and settlements um, where they, the interactions are multi-directional, so the, both sides need them. Um, necessary, structured, regularized, and reproduced. So everything's important interconnected. So world systems, um, bigger like nodes in the system or like larger countries that might be in a system affect smaller countries and need them, and the smaller countries will also need them countries and the entire system is a connected web. Um, so it studies the long-term continuous continuities and qualitative transformation of world systems. Um, so the rise in complexity from hunter-gatherer systems early on to the current world system that we live in now. Um, and uses an anthropological framework to compare inequality systems, so going from nomadic hunter-gatherer bands up into complex modern society. With the, yeah. Um, so social movements, world revolutions, so there have been uh, a number of social uh, world revolutions throughout the history, um, this is a few of them, so 1789, starting with the, well starting with, but the French Revolution was happening uh, roughly concurrently in the American Revolution here um, in North America, as well as um, a lot of stuff that was happening, decolonization in Latin America. Um, so talking about the way in which these rebellions sort of shaped the periphery, which is um, in the world system, you have a core and then periphery and semi-periphery systems outside of it that are either contributing resources or raw materials or other things to the main system. Um, they really helped shape the struggle between the two, like, between France and Britain, which were the two sort of larger set, uh, countries within the system at the time. Um, in 1848, um, a lot of different democratic labor and uh, revolutionary events were happening in Europe. Um, new Chris, new Chris, uh, excuse me. New sects of Christianity were popping up in the U.S. and in other places, um, as well as the Taiping Rebellion in China. Um, 1917, we had the there was upheaval in Russia, uh, in Russia, uh, rise of third international, um, a lot of revolutions in Mexico and China, Seattle Strike in 1919, 